Question number eight in the name of the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Labour and asks, what will be the gain in real income per week adjusted for inflation since the 1st of April 2008 of a full-time worker on the minimum wage as a result of the government's decision on the 2009 minimum wage increase? Honourable Kate Wilkinson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The 50 cent increase in the minimum wage announced yesterday is intended to maintain the real income and purchasing power of people on the minimum wage. Mr Speaker. Top Honourable the Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, why do the figures that she supplied to the Cabinet include theoretical job losses in firms as a result of an increase in the minimum wage but did not recognise jobs created as a result of the economic stimulus of such an increase? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Kate Wilkinson. Uh, Mr Speaker, protecting jobs is our priority. We believe that we have struck the right balance between protecting jobs and preserving purchasing power. Order the Order Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr, Speaker, I, Mr Speaker, I ask you to ask the Minister to address the question. She Mr. Mr Speaker, is he allowed to do that? The, member, the Honourable Member knows he mustn't interject during a point of order, and the Member is raising a valid point of order. Um, Mr Speaker, it was, a, it was a very clear question about the figures supplied. Uh, the Member read from an answer which didn't relate to the question asked and didn't come close to addressing it. Speaking of the point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Mr Speaker, the, the, the Minister answering gave an answer to the question. Uh, she most certainly addressed the question. The interesting thing is that Mr Mallard alluded to some documents that he should table if he wants to be taken seriously. Members, I'm going to do a slightly unusual thing here. I'm going to actually go back to the question laid down by the Honourable Trevor Mallard that was a very clear question. And I invite the Minister to answer the Honourable Trevor Mallard's question given on notice. Mr Speaker, consideration was given to uh, much documentation that was provided in making a decision on the minimum wage. Uh, the minimum wage uh, is, is a balanced act uh, and we took all figures and information into account when making that decision. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, can I ask the Minister why she changed her mind as to whether there should be increase in the minimum wage? Uh, Mr Speaker. Kate Wilkinson. The uh, member is assuming too much. There was significant cons consultation on the minimum wage review throughout the process and, and the decision was made based on that consultation and based on the information received. Point of order, Dr Russell Norman. Mr Speaker, you've been very clear that you want ministers to answer questions. In fact, you've asked the Minister twice now to answer this question. The answer is a number. It is a number that's been asked. It's very, very explicit in the question. As you yourself said, on neither occasion has the Minister come up with the number that has been asked. She's given us a bunch of words. She has not even addressed the question. Order. Order. I, I think, uh, members, this is a very interesting question, and I, I want Ministers to take note of this question. If one reads the question laid down by the Honourable Trevor Mallard, it was a very clear question. The Minister had time to prepare an answer to that question. It would not take a large amount of departmental time to prepare an answer to that question. I note the member asking the question did not seek my assistance when that first question was answered. He sought my assistance following the first supplementary. Had he sought my assistance following the answering of the question laid down, I'd have been more tough on requiring the Minister to answer it. But I cannot be the judge of whether the member is satisfied with an answer. But I just want to make it clear to Ministers, where a question is as clear as this question, it's probably one of the most clear questions on the order paper today, I do expect Ministers, unless they consider it not to be in the public interest, and that is perfectly, we heard the Honourable Prime Minister today say that to answer a particular question uh, may not be in the, would not be in the public interest. That is a perfectly legitimate answer. If a minister decides to answer a question is not in the public interest, I will accept that. But where a question is as clear as question eight on today's order paper, I think New Zealanders expect ministers to answer questions that are that clear. 
However, I point out again to the Honourable Member, he did not seek my assistance at the first uh, answer, and I think we need to leave the matter there for today. But I think I've made it very clear to Ministers that where questions are that clear, I think New Zealanders, I've made it clear now, I've, I've intervened. I do not expect this issue to be taken any further. I thank the uh, Dr. Russell Norman for raising his point of order. I think I've made it very clear to ministers what I expect as speaker. I now, unless there are further supplementaries, move on to question. Supplementary, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on how many occasions did she honour the mana in enhancing arrangement with the Maori Party and receive representations from Maori Party ministers on the minimum wage, and how many of those were in writing? Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Kate Wilkinson. The minimum wage review included extensive consultation, including consultation with other parliamentary and cabinet colleagues, uh, all, including a call for submissions. The views expressed were all given careful consideration. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, Mr. Speaker, two, I think two points. One, I called for the submissions. Uh, the, the minister didn't. But the important point was I didn't ask about cabinet ministers. As the m minister replied, I asked about Maori party ministers who are not cabinet ministers. She did not address that question. I think uh, I've assisted the Honourable Member as far as I can today with respect to answers to questions and order. Point of order, the Honourable at, Trevor at the, at the point submissions were called for, and I called for the submissions, there were no Maori Party ministers. They cannot be caught in that group of people who were asked for submissions as part of the review, because it happened in September and October of last year. This is a very specific question about a group who were not ministers before the election and are not cabinet ministers, uh, as discussed by the minister. She did not, therefore, address that question. Order. The member will be aware, of course, the minister has no responsibility for matters that took place before uh, the election. What I'm prepared to do on this occasion is to allow the, the Honourable Member to ask a further supplementary question, and I invite the Member to do so. Mr Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brown. Mr Speaker, that should come off the Labour Party total, because this Member has been in the House for a very long time, and he would know from his own nine years of experience dodging all sorts of questions that quite often questions are asked for which an answer is not appreciated. The Minister made it clear for what the part of this process she was responsible for, there was consultation on a widespread basis. That should stand as an answer. Order, I've, I've heard sufficient on this. I've made it clear. I've already decided I'm allowing the member a further question because I want to make it very clear to members, to ministers in particular, that where questions laid down as clear as this one are laid down on the order paper, the public of New Zealand has a right to an answer. And that's why I'm allowing the member a further question. But I do uh, point out to the honourable member that he cannot ask the minister about matters that took place prior to her becoming minister. The honourable Trevor Mallard. Um, Mr. Speaker, I'll make it clear that I don't. I, I'm not. On how many occasions did she honour the mana-enhancing arrangement with the Maori Party and receive representations from Maori Party ministers on the minimum wage? And how many of these were in writing? Mm. The, the Honourable Kate Wilkinson. Extensive consultation was undertaken in relation to the minimum wage review, and I am satisfied that that consultation was sufficient enough for a rational, reasonable and fair decision on the minimum wage to be made. Question number nine.